The first annual Reardon IBC and Cancer Symposium proudly presents IBC Administration Nursing Concerns, Specimen Prep for Post-IBC Levels. Your presenters, Marsha McCray, RN, and Jerry T. Meyer, BS, MT, ASCP. Staff uh, will do some practical presentations about IV vitamin C and then the use of the BioCenter Lab. And so we're going to start off first with uh, my right-hand person, uh, Nurse Marsha McCray, who's been with the center 20 years, I believe, and uh, she is our number one troubleshooter when it comes to anything practical about IV vitamin C. And so, uh, Marsha, if you'll come on up here, we'll go ahead and let you do your presentation. That'll be followed by Jerry Tmeyer, who's the lab manager. Please welcome Marsha McCray. Good morning. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about IVC administration and some nursing concerns. Side effects, mostly there's side benefits and not too many side effects from vitamin C. Um, about the only thing that we see here at the center um, is when you go to the higher doses of vitamin C, patients complain of thirst, being thirsty, and they have to urinate more frequently. So those are really about the only things that we see. Um, so I kind of already went over that. Um, side effects of high dose vitamin C are rare. However, um, there are precautions and potential side effects to consider. Um, the first one, and um, I think this is in your protocol, in, your, in the syllabus in red, probably, um, high-dose intravenous vitamin C at levels of 15 grams or higher um, will cause a false positive or a high reading on a finger stick glucose, so that's on a gl glucometer reading, and that can last for up to eight hours. So you need to make sure that your diabetic patients are aware of that, so if they go to test their blood sugar and it's very high. Um, that's the reason, if they just got a vitamin C infusion. Um, so you need to make sure that they do a, a blood glucose from the vein so that it, that is not affected by the vitamin C. And then always begin with a small dose, 15 grams is usually what we start out with here at the center. Um, there has been uh, one report of tumor necrosis or tumor lysis syndrome with high dose um, vitamin C. So we usually start out with 15 grams for our patients most of the time and go 25, 50, and I think Shalong talked about that also a little while ago. Um, and then make sure that your patients uh, have adequate renal function, they're adequately hydrated, that helps with finding a vein, and they have good um, voiding, urine voiding capacity prior to starting the IV therapy. And Dr. Jackson, I believe, talked about this yesterday. Uh, um, assess the G6PD level prior to IVC therapy, as hemolysis can occur if there's a deficiency of the G6PD. So you always want to check that. And we check it um, anytime we do 25 grams or above. We have that, we require that first. And as with any intravenous vitamin C infusion, there's always a potential for infiltration. So you need to be aware of that. Um, you need to you know, check the site. Um, this is mostly nursing related, but um, for swelling, pain, uh, decrease in flow rate, any complaints that the patient might have. Um, some patients can complain of shakiness. Um, this is, can be due to low magnesium or calcium levels. Um, we add one cc of magnesium chloride to all our IVs, um, at least one cc. Sometimes we do two to three, four, five. Depends on the person, um, and then usually we don't have much trouble with the shakiness. Um, if they do have a severe reaction where they, you know, have shakes and chills and that kind of thing, then we have um, treated that with 10 cc's of calcium gluconate, and we do that IV slow push at 1 cc per minute rate. And back to the magnesium chloride that we would use here um, is from Merit, and it's 200 milligrams per milliliter is the dose that we use for that. And the calcium is a 10% calcium gluconate, and it's 100 milligrams per mil. 
We've had probably about uh, five or six patients that we've had um, to give the calcium to, and we do that at, usually at the end of the, the um, IV, but we have given it during if we need to. They're really shaky and chilly. And then you always want to make sure that your patient has eaten before the IVC infusion because a lot of times the high doses of vitamin C can lower their blood sugar. And then the other thing you need to be aware of is given the amount of fluid uh, used as a vehicle for the IV vitamin C, um, any condition that could be affected adversely by that um, is a relatively a relative contraindication, like congestive heart failure, ascites, edema. If we have some patients who are having trouble with edema and that type of thing, we do a pre-weight and a post-weight um, just so we can keep track on their, their fluid load. <coughs> Um, there have been some reports of iron overload with vitamin C therapies, um, and here at the center, we've treated one patient with hemochromatosis uh, with high-dose vitamin C with no adverse effects or significant changes in the iron level. And um, we suggest that IV vitamin C should be given at a slow intravenous rate of 0.5 grams per minute. Uh, however, rates up to 1 gram per minute are generally tolerable. Um, but you need to monitor your patient closely for nausea, shakes, chills. Um, sometimes they can develop that if it's given too fast. Um, and then our theory is intravenous vitamin C should never be given as an intravenous push. Usually it's very irritating if it's not diluted down um, and the, because of the osmolarity. Uh, and we don't ever give it intramuscularly or subcutaneous here. So um, one comment I might make, just recently we've had trouble getting our post-C levels up, tissue saturation on our patients, and so we have been running our IVs a little bit faster than we normally do. Um, and we're kind of doing a little mini research project on that right now. It's kind of half and half. Some of the patients do have a higher uh, post-C level doing that. Um, the other half, it's equal to what it was before or a little bit lower. So we're still investigating that. Right, like the 75 gram, we mix in 1,000 cc's of sterile water usually, and we've normally we run it about three hours. We've been running it about an hour and a half, mm -hmm. and some patients can tolerate that, and some patients can't. So you just have to monitor your patient closely, and that's all I have. Is there any other questions? Like hard do you buffer? The vitamin C that we have is comes buffered, and so we don't usually put any extra in there, but sometimes lately we have um, 10 cc's of sodium bicarb, and I can't tell you what the, you know, milligram dose is. I didn't write that down. <laughs> Sorry. Well, in production of the sodium bicarb, you actually have to bring it to some pH with sodium bicarb, so that means you pretty much neutralize the ascorbic acid to sodium ascorbate. I'm going to go ahead and let's move the conversation along here because we're going to do a wrap up, Michael, and everyone's going to be leaving here pretty soon. Sorry. Now I'm going to introduce uh, Jerry Timar to talk a little bit about some lab concerns. I wanted to briefly talk about the proper collection and preservation of vitamin C specimens. You know, if you choose to send these to us, we will send you a kit. This kit will have, you know, a it's a styrofoam box that has instructions, very detailed instructions on how to collect. There will be a drawing tube in there, either green top or EDTA, a preservative tube that is 3% uh, metaphosphoric acid, an ice pack to freeze and send back with it, a biohazard bag, a FedEx bag, a requisition, and also a dispo pipette that you can use. You know, we prefer you use a more accurate pipetter for pipetting the three mils of plasma. But also we checked the, the little dispo pipettes, and they're, they're very accurate in themselves. Uh, again, we do provide free overnight FedEx return shipping. 
on, in the continental USA only. We certainly wish we could do this with Canada, but somehow the gas costs so much more flying over the border. So, uh, <clears throat> again, on, on the drawing, you, you do want to draw immediately post IVC from the opposite arms. The um, sample should be centrifuged and processed within 15 minutes. Possibly the 15 minutes could go a little bit longer than that. It's something that we've always adhered to over the years. It's hard to change our habits, but we think it's a little more stable than that. Again, you take three mils of plasma after you spin the tube down and you put it into four and a half mils of 3% metaphosphoric acid. You mix and you freeze it. Once you freeze that, it's stable for a minimum of a month in the freezer. Um, if you, for instance, had a short draw, you didn't have enough blood, you can... If you keep the ratios correct on the metaphosphoric to blood, you can take one mil of the plasma and mix it with one and a half mils of metaphosphoric acid. The cost is $77 to do that. And when you ship these back, um, do remember that we're closed on the weekends and around the holidays, so it's important you don't ship at those times. Um, and this applies not only to the vitamin C test, but anything in the test catalog that you received. We could certainly do all those tests for you if you choose as well as the Health Hunter Beat the Odd panels that, that uh, some of you took advantage of. Um, again, uh, we can pro, you know, provide discounted pricing for that, something that I think would you know, you could certainly benefit your patients. Um, and if you have enough people, I mean, it's possible we could even come to your facility. We like to get out of Kansas whenever we can. <laughs> in fact, in, in, a, in, a, in exactly a month from now, we'll be heading up to Lawrence, Kansas, and we'll be, there's a company up there that... Um, does uh, nutritional testing on their employees, and so there's 200 of them up there that we will be will be uh, going to. Problems with um, results to save you some angst. Um, these are things that we've seen over the years on samples that come back. Had a doctor or two that's called called us over the years, and his results very low all the time. He couldn't understand it. He'd call us, we'd repeat them. Um, and after you got to speaking with him a while, it was just a matter of he was infusing them over four to six hours, very long time, and the results just will be low when you do that. Uh, a delay in drawing the sample can happen, you know, if the patient, I mean, if you have a hard time hitting the, the, getting the blood, um, if the patient has to go to the bathroom right after, that happens a lot. That can make your results lower. Too much volume in the preservative tube, you know, we know that when these tubes come back, they're supposed to have four and a half mils of metaphosphoric and three mils of plasma. So they should be at exact level. And so a lot of times, this happens a lot. We get tubes back with more than that in them. And the reason is they're spinning the tube down, but they're not bothering to, to accurately pipette three mils. They just get some in the tube and send it to us. Brown color preservative tubes we have, they, they're supposed to be white precipitate. The brown is they're taking the entire whole blood sample, three mils of whole blood without spinning it and giving it to us. Well, you, you know, you can't run it. Um, delayed processing too, if you know, if you take too long to process it. We did a study, and this is not a large study by any means, but it was a study that we took some pre-IVC samples, and we drew four tubes on nine patients. And of those four tubes, the first one up there is, is where we, we processed all nine tubes after we drew them immediately and then put the, the um, processed material in the freezer. And then we left the tube sit at room temperature for 30 minutes, four hours at room temperature. And then lastly, the serum one, we took the serum, and there's, there's laboratories that do ask for serum, okay? And we've tried to mimic this. We took the serum, we froze it for four to seven days, and then we thought it out, just like you would do if you had a laboratory come pick up your specimen, they put it in the freezer and they batch it, they'll run it once a week. You freeze it, so then we would thaw it back out at the end of a week and immediately deprotonize it, so that stabilizes what vitamin C is left in it, and you run it. Now you can tell that uh, at 30 minutes, there was, you know, we had the same result. At four hours, it did decrease by 10%. And on the serum, we got levels that were 91% lower than what they actually were. Um, seven out of nine were undetectable levels. 
Now, I remember a study that was done even back 10 years ago where Dr. Reardon and Dr. Jackson, who take at least three grams of vitamin C a day, we drew their blood and sent it to two other labs that asked for serum. We got values around 2.5 milligrams per deciliter in our laboratory, but when we got those results back, they were zero. They were undetectable. It was the correct result. It just had died, you know, over the time that it took to get there. You've got to preserve them properly. Um, the other study we did is where we took... Um, we took four, uh, six patients. We did the same thing on the post-IVC tubes. And the results processed immediately were 286, same result at 30 minutes, and surprisingly the same result at four hours. So that it does have more stability than you think. Just in case you are processing one or have one and you've waited too long, it's not going to die that quickly. But again, we prefer as soon as possible. Serum, an 8% decrease. And again, this is a mean, you know, the mean of six results. Some of those people may have decreased by 40 or 50 milligrams per deciliter. Some of them were very close. It's just, it's not a guaranteed 8% decrease. It just depends. Um, in the last slide that I have, this is a study, and I, and I have to thank Megan Powers, one of our phlebotomists, who allowed herself to be stuck eight times. She was given 25 grams of IVC, and we drew her blood from the opposite arm, processed it immediately, got a result of 122, and then we drew her blood on the same arm as the IVC was given to see how much that might affect it, and it was very little. I mean, it went up to 131. Then, over the course of 10, 20, you know, every 10 minutes, we drew her blood to see how quickly it went down, and it did decrease, you know, at an average of... Uh, 8%, you know, each, every 10 minutes. So at any rate, that concludes my portion of this. If anyone wants to talk to me, you know, about laboratory testing, be glad to do that. There's an 800 number. Our website's available. I thank you for your time. The first annual Reardon IVC and Cancer Symposium was brought to you by the Center for the Improvement of Human Functioning International, located at 3100 North Hillside, Wichita, Kansas, USA. To learn more about the center and what we have to offer, please visit us on the web at www.brightspot.org.